Hi, I'm Rachel, a Radical Soul Untangled. Happy 2021, everyone. Thanks for watching this. I thought I'd um, kick off the new year by giving you kind of like a little um, walk through the major arcana of tarot with the current um, array of tarot decks I have. I now have 10. <laughs> Uh, a couple of these I got recently with some uh, Christmas money. Um, so I'm going to go with like kind of the more traditional ones and then with some with the more abstract ones. Um, so we're going to start off with the Fool. The Fool is card zero, usually. Um, kind of like the protagonist. It's um, If you look at the Major Arcana, it's kind of like the Fool learning these major life lessons. And... The Fool card itself is kind of not just about the Fool, but it's like a call to adventure. Um, or it's like a divine um, calling to uh, start a new path in life. And so, um, now this is called the um, af uh, before tarot. Sorry. I plan on getting uh, the after tarot and maybe the in-between tarot at some point. So those might be added onto here. Um, but I thought this was interesting. The concept is, um, you know, what happens just in the moments before the more iconic Rider Waite Smith um, images in tarot. So here we have the fool in a tunic uh, with yellow and orange flowers, and the card is very yellow. There's a background, there's a sun in the background. Uh, so this yellow energy uh, usually relates to the um, uh, the uh, solar plexus chakra, the third chakra, which is kind of like your seat of uh, self-confidence. And it's kind of what you um, associate with that gut feeling you have, whether something's right for you or wrong for you. Um, so it's kind of showing that the um, fool has a, a confidence. However, uh, it's kind of implied that that confidence is rooted in being naive. Um, you know, they're on a journey, because you see they got the bindle staff with the parcel on there. And uh, this fool is about to reach for a white rose. Uh, and it looks like he's kind of moving downhill. And uh, to me, this card means more like um, wandering around and uh, kind of getting caught up in like the details around you, which is good. Like, hey, you're in the present moment, you're enjoying your present moment. But you might use be a little too easily diverted from your path. So you can see there's kind of a path here. Um, and we also have the dog. I take the dog, which often recurs in the full card, to kind of mean um, maybe the more instinctual and bodily and emotional side of the fool. Um, and I'll go into that more later. And here the dog looks almost kind of confused. I can't tell if it's being playful and trying to chase its tail or if it's a wild dog and the fool is uh, kind of startling it and is turning around to bark at him. Um, but anyways, yeah, this is the fool just moments before uh, this one. Now this is called the, this is the Universal uh, Rider Waite Smith deck. Um, this is a more traditional one that people think of when they think of the tarot. And again, we have a bright yellow sky showing like, you know, that third chakra, uh, self-confident energy. His tunic has the yellow flowers. And here he's picked one of those roses and he's holding it. But this time, instead of being so bogged down in details and in, in, in the world around him, he's still in the present moment, but he's looking upward. He's not looking where he's going. Um, this card kind of implies a trust in the divine, you know, uh, following his heart. He's got like his arms back and his chest out. So that's kind of like this following your heart kind of energy. Uh, his bag in this one is more obviously red. And I take the red to mean he's got like a solid uh, root chakra. So feeling very secure and going on this trip. So he's got, so he feels very secure. And here the dog is kind of excited and um, maybe a little anxious, maybe the dog is trying to warn him that he's about to possibly walk off a cliff. It's hard to say, but we have the sun representing, um, you know, a lot of positive aspects, warmth, clarity, um, 
you know, the divine, very life-giving card. Um, but we could say generally with the fool, it's almost always said that um, this is the, the leap of faith card or the call to adventure card. And now here we have, this is the, um, the mythic tarot. Uh, the new mythic tarot, I should be more specific. There actually was a, um, an original mythic tarot. came out like in the 80s. I found this book at Half Price Books. Um, I thought it was just about tarot. It actually has like images of the original art. Um, but then recently they created this new mythic tarot um, with some of the same art, but sometimes it's been recolored. So um, it looks a little more computerized. Some of the art's been redone. Um, the book text is about the same, but still, it's a good deck. It's basically about Greek mythology. So if, um, if Greek mythology really resonates with you, this is a cool deck to use, especially because, um, you know, some of those myths help make the, um, cards themselves make a little more sense. So here we have, uh, Dionysus as the fool. I didn't know this until I read the book, but he's the twice born God. <laughs> Like, um, I think his mother like died and uh, Zeus cut him out of her, cut her out of her belly and incubated him in his belly or someone else. I don't know. <laughs> it's been a little while since I read the book, but he's the twice born God. Here he is emerging from a cave. You can see he kind of has like a bright, youthful, again, a very naive look to him. Um, you know, the sun, uh, there's the sun, but it's, it's hard to tell. You can either be a sun rising or a sunset. Um, but again, there's this motion of looking up, having kind of a naive but hopeful look, but not looking where he's going and looking like he's about to step off a cliff, joyfully though. Um, so you can almost say it's as if the fool, you know, from outside we might be shouting warnings like, look where you're going. <laughs> you know, you might have people shouting at you, look where you're going, you big idiot, look where you're going, be more careful. But we don't see things from the fool's perspective. They might have, see that there's, you know, something to catch them nearby. Um, so again, they're willing to take this leap of faith because they have some other knowing. They can see things that we can't see because it's their experience. So um, I think that's a good uh, lesson to take from these cards. And now this one, the fool, this is from the... Um, uh, Chakra Wisdom Tarot. Really love the concept of this deck. The art's beautiful. It's a very feminine deck. Um, so the fool is a woman, and um, and a lot of the other people she encountered. You know, there's there's some males in the cards, um, but primarily, you know, the figures that you see are primarily feminine, usually in these um, opulent gowns, and the co the borders are color coded. Um, according to which chakra they align with. I really like how this deck was done. It's a really good way of seeing like what kind of energies are at play in a reading. Um, but anyways, this one really, so this one's red. Again, red is the root chakra, meaning um, a sense of being grounded, you know, security, um, you know, uh, well-rooted, knowing your roots, you know. Um, and so here we actually have physical roots coming out of her, out of her gown. And um, so it's very interesting because these other cards, most of the other cards imply walking off a cliff. Here she's very grounded, but you see this like light behind her or seemingly coming from her chest. So it's like she's got this inner calling. So it's more like she, this one has a feel more like she's comfortable where she is, but she's got this inner calling that is beckoning her to break free from these roots but that you see the roots also in her gown so you know her roots are within her it, that it's not about the environment that she's planted in she can pull up her roots of her own choice and um move on to you know a new adventure in her life and um and so I like how this card kind of approaches it differently um that basically you know don't be so reliant on the environment you're in. You have your own inner sense of security that you can take with you wherever you go. And so there's no need to fear. 
And now we have this. This is a newer deck. I just got it. It's, um, where the box go? There it is. This is the Lightseer's Tarot. Normally, I don't really like the contemporary, more contemporary kind of cards. Um, not because I'm a traditionalist, um, but, yeah, they just, uh, I don't know. I can't quite put it into words, but I really like this deck. It's very beautiful um, for how simple a lot of the imagery is. Um, there's, there's still a lot to go off of um, for your in as intuitive, you know, guides uh, for me. And I like everybody's, in the, in the way that everyone's dressed, even though it's a more modern dress, it's mostly like t-shirt and jeans or skirts, you know, so it's very bohemian kind of style so everybody's looks very comfortable so I think I like that um you know I don't think anybody's like in a suit but um you know here we have the fool again uh portrayed as a woman uh this time more like a woman of color so that's also very nice um but we have instead of her walking you know seemingly blindly off a cliff she is more like taking a plunge She's, you know, has her arms out, again, her chest open. She's also wearing yellow, which is, again, that, that third uh, chakra, um, solar plexus, you know, confident gut feeling. Like she knows that what she's doing is the right thing. Uh, we have a purple crystal in her left hand. So the left side is usually considered your more feminine, intuitive, knowing side. And she's got a staff, you know, or maybe a wand in her right hand, which is the more masculine side. That's your, you know, doer uh, aspect of the inner duality of masculine and feminine. And she is just about to take the plunge into water. And water in tarot is considered um, you know, emotion. You know, when you cry, you know, there's, there's tears when you cry. Um, <clears throat> so, um, and the moon as well. So, water is is a very emotional energy so it's like she is willing to again, pull up her roots and take the plunge into her emotions and we also have this sacred geometry the um the flower of life and um and this is a very um you know kind of like life affirming like geometry so she's not afraid of her emotions she's not afraid to take a deep dive into her feelings and um, she's got her staff and she's got her crystal so she's trusting her intuition she has a sense of her own power and she's allowing herself to fall into the depths of her emotions without fear so I think that's really cool <laughs> and this is a brand new one I just got this is called um Uh, Fantastical Creatures Tarot. Now, I was drawn to this because it reminded me of a book I used to have in like high school. And it was called like um, Mystical, Magical, Mythical Beasts. And it was by somebody. Uh, and I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of that. And also that, um, you know, book, Fantastical Beasts and Where to Find Them. Um, I was talking about it with somebody at the store. I was getting it. And I was like, yeah, it was by somebody. And then I looked and D.J. Conway. And that was a person who wrote that book. So it's by the woman who wrote the book that I used to have like back in high school, back in the 90s. And, um, and so I thought it was pretty cool, like a more abstract kind of tarot. Um, I liked the art that I saw from it. And um, bummer, I just learned that almost two years ago, DJ Conway passed away. Um, no, like I said, she was, she was pretty cool. And now this fool is portrayed by an unusual creature that I'm not even that familiar with. Um, the amph oh, shoot, Amphestian. But basically it is like, um, it is a snake-like creature with a head at both ends. Um, this one also has like uh, wings and bird-like feet. And, uh, and there's a path, it's on an old tree, um, but we see a path here, um, and it, this one's looking in one direction, this one's looking in the other, so this is kind of showing how the fool, um, 
you know, could be an inner conflict with themselves, you know, um, one could be like, you know, following their head and one can be following their heart. And so there could be an inner potential for inner conflict, you know, for the fool when trying to go on a new journey, um, which could breed like a lot of uh, confusion. You know, this is, this fool is more like, am I making the right choice? What am I doing? Why do I feel this way? What if things go wrong? You know, so this fool has a little more um, uncertainty, less of this divine trust in the divine or trust in yourself, um, which I feel like is really more stressed in this one. And this one is more, um, has a little more chaotic potential, I see. And next we have the Crow Tarot. Um, I do like this one a lot, although this fool is, um, it's a little more, um, it's a little different. So whereas these other ones imply a, a person that lives on the ground about to fall into the air, uh, we have a crow, which is normally a creature that's very comfortable in the air. A crow can't take a plunge necessarily, but this crow is actually sitting on a log and moving, which I'm guessing is probably along a river which is a little less of a natural element for the crow. So I think that's kind of cool how they did that. Um, you know, because a crow can doesn't have to worry about falling like humans do. You know, we're supposed to have kind of like a sense of anxiety in some of these cards. Um, I show that leap of faith, you know, take, or taking a plunge, you know. Um, but this one, the crow is in a crow's unnatural state, being on, on a log, okay, but in the water, you know, so this crow is, this is more again about divine trust, but in a different way. This crow is like on the log going with the flow, you know. Um, we have some flowers on the water. Um, you know, um, and that kind of shows me like a uh, feeling of just kind of, for some reason, I feel like people you might meet along your journey, like incidentally, the people who um, might brighten your day, but might not stay in your life for very long. Um, and we have this, um, I guess it, I can't quite tell if they intend this to be a feather because it also has a very fern like frond quality, but I kind of imagine this like falling and touching on the crow's head and the crow getting the indication the hint the inspiration to, to take flight but in the meantime the crow is just kind of trusting in the flow of the river and um, seeing where the river is taking him without actually getting that higher bird's eye view and and staying in control the crow is trusting in the flow of the river but knows that whenever things get tough the crow can take flight when necessary so again this one kind of gives a sense of like self um, trust but also a little more agency and control and this was my first tarot deck but <laughs> is the one I'm working hardest on getting comfortable with uh, I do not have the book handy to show you that this is from the Wildwood Tarot um, so this is very Celtic and very forest theme Again, I was drawn to this because this is the stuff I was more into in high school. <laughs> um, instead of the fool, they've done away with the wording altogether. Um, they call this one the wanderer. And now the artist and uh, writer of this said they deliberately kept this figure, uh, their gender ambiguous, so that um, anyone can really identify with them. Because as we see, fool is predominantly kind of portrayed as a male. Uh, we have a couple um, and here. These two are male, all assume male. And then we have two like, you know, feminine fools. But here, so then they say wanderer, because I guess to get rid of the um, negative connotation of fool being like ignorant and silly, that, but they want to emphasize the trust. So this one looks like they're about to take a step off a, off a cliff, but like onto like a rainbow bridge towards this forest. And um, this person has a cloak of like moss 
and uh, there's like tree bark protecting them, like an arm armor. Um, and it kind of just shows that this person is also kind of well rooted, but more connected to nature, and that they feel drawn to um, continue that connection to nature. Uh, so, um, you know, this abyss that's often shown could symbolize like the illusion of like the modern world and how they're gonna, you know, maybe they're seeing this illusion for what it is. Um, an illusion <laughs> and that they see that the nature, you know, is, um, you know, where, where they belong or where they're, where they feel a connection to the divine. So I feel this is, this is very much a return to nature in order to feel connected to the world and to the divine and even to yourself. And now these are both by the same person. This is the, um, this first one is the Archangel Power Tarot. And, um, and this one, they call it the Leap of Faith, which again is kind of like the general theme for the Fool. And this one, they just call it a Leap of Faith. Um, sometimes the major arcana cards in this deck are um, more worded like that. There, you'll see a lot of altered wording for the traditional cards, and especially in the major arcana. Um, and this one has flavor text. <laughs> so this one says, believe in yourself, listen to your heart, do what gives you joy. And this one says Archangel Metatron. So um, according to the author, they say that Archangel Metatron is the archangel that likes to protect uh, children or very sensitive people. Um, Archangel Metatron, I believe, is also like kind of considered like the, the voice of God or like one of the heralds of God. I feel like in this case, more like the Archangel Metatron is the one that kind of delivers the impulse to follow your heart and go forward into this hero's journey. This I feel like uh, Metatron is issuing that um, call to adventure, you know, that people feel as they're about to start a new cycle. Um, I feel like it's significant that the guy has his shirt opened, kind of represent like an open heart. The shirt also seems to have a bit of a green hint to it. And green is associated with the heart chakra. So um, we have like kind of like, again, the sun is showing like, like a divine guidance and optimism, hopefulness. Um, he's on a path, you know, so he's on a more carved path rather than about to step off a cliff. He's following a series of stairs. So the drop off is less um, treacherous, you could say. And uh, there's butterflies, which I, I think could be like symbols of transformation. So this is the start of an inner transformation that he's going on and uh again we have the dog but this dog is um you know more fixed while well, his face is more reflective of um you know he kind of has like an inner reflective look to himself and the dog is kind of looking straight forward so the dog seems to be more focused on the physical and the, the fool himself seems to be more um, introspective, you know, kind of like he's listening to the call in his heart. And the dog's following him, but the dog represents kind of, like I said here, like a um, your bodily, you know, tie to the physical. You're, you're more like animal instincts. And yet your animal instincts eventually learn to trust, you know, your higher reasoning and... Um, your, your sense of faith when you feel connected to uh, the greater consciousness, to the divine. And this last one, this deck is also by the same person, but this one is called um, Angel Wisdom Tarot. I like this one a bit better. They're very similar. I like this tarot a little bit better. Um, and they call the fool instead the dreamer, which I think is also a very good um, description. And uh, I like this one's just chock full of all kinds of fun imagery to pull off of. And uh, so again, we have the fool kind of having a, a bright, naive kind of look on his face, looking upward in us, showing that he's, he's looking for divine 
signs, you know, to guide him. Um, again, kind of guided by his heart. He's got like a, a red or an orange shirt. Um, red again being that root chakra. Orange, uh, if you see this more as an orange, then it's more of a creativity. Uh, the second chakra, your uh, sacral chakra, which is your root of creativity. Um, so if you're seeing this as more orange than red, then you could go with that kind of interpretation. This I like because there's, he looks like he's coming from this door, but this door doesn't lead from a house. It leads from the cosmos. So it kind of just shows like how a soul kind of, to me, this kind of shows like a soul being newly incarnated, you know, um, almost like a newborn, but, you know, fully formed, you know, your soul just kind of taking in the sights of the world around and seeing um, how everything is interconnected. Um, we have an hourglass here, so I feel like that's a sign of mortality and also a sign of how um, yeah, how time is kind of an illusion in the grand scheme of things. We think we have to stick to these very rigid timelines in order to be successful in our lives, but um, it's maybe an indication of like divine timing, that things happen when everything is aligned energetically and everything easily, more easily falls into place. So this could be like an indication of trust and divine timing or a sense of urgency in your own morality, mortality. And again, we have Archangel Metatron in the background, but he's on the outside of a green gate. And again, the green kind of representing the heart chakra. So um, I don't take this to mean that the fool is closing out the angel, but the angel is being very um, respectful of his boundaries. The angels will not intervene unless called upon, you know, and trusted. Um, they will not impede uh, with your free will. But as soon as you invite them in and let them help you, you know, they, they, they perform miracles in your life. You know, transformative changes can really happen in a short period of time. And uh, again, we have the dog. And this dog is looking again similar to this one, is looking at the fool, but I feel like the dog is a little anxious, but looking at its master for cues, you know, and um, again, I take the dog to kind of mean a more um, instinctual side of us, but that's, this dog is more learning to trust in how the fool is taking um, his guidance from the divine, looking for synchronicities, looking for gentle signs to show that he's on the right path. You know, he's following his heart. He's not so much stuck in his head. Um, and let's see. So, oh, and he has a key in his hand so that the key, um, probably helped him, you know, through that door into this, you know, beautiful place. So he sees the world as a beautiful, uh, place, a very optimistic kind of energy. He's got a key and he's probably doesn't either this key went to this door or maybe this key he knows is going to um, be useful when he gets to his destination. But he doesn't, you know, know yet. But he's still holding on to this key um, to get uh, because he knows he'll need it eventually. So again, this one says uh, has flavor text, I call it a new start. Trust yourself. Push your fears aside and take a leap of faith. So, um, yeah, so when the fool comes up in a reading, it usually means, um, like the beginning of a new cycle for you or for the person that, that the reading is about, um, it kind of means like, uh, beginning of like a new <laughs> story arc, um, or it can also mean like, you know, your, your new opportunities coming up and you're kind of being called to just not overthink it and just follow your heart. If your heart says, hey, this is the right thing to do. I don't have all the details hammered out. Don't worry about it. Just start moving in that direction. If it feels right, move in that direction, you know, or it could be telling you that it's time to, you know, trust in your own roots and not be so mired in your environment. Maybe just, you know, but the card kind of implies a sense of movement and, uh, Again, every deck has kind of like a different flavor to it. And um, and so that's why I have a variety of decks. Because um, depending on what I'm hearing from the person, 
and the situation. I might want something a little more traditional or kind of neutral. I might want something um, that will resonate with them. And if they like, you know, Greek mythology, that can help the reading make more sense to them. Uh, the chakra deck really shows like the energies at play within them and around them. Uh, so I like that. I really like the intuitive imagery in this deck and it's just very hopeful and, uh, and it's more contemporary so it might be less alienating for some people. Uh, we've got these angel decks, they're very uplifting and um, this one for if you have a real strong tie to nature um, and shamanism, this would be a great deck. And then this one's a little more abstract, a little more open to interpretation. Uh, so that's going to be kind of a fun one as I get more acquainted with it. And then the crow, I kind of see similar to these two, kind of neutral, a little more traditional, but um, sometimes nice to see crows instead of people. You know, you can, their faces are a little more neutral, so you can kind of read into your own energy, you know, whatever helps guide you in the reading. So anyway, I want to do more of these, so stay tuned. And I hope you enjoyed this little walkthrough of the Major Arcana.